Hello, this is Mrs. Walsh looking like an alien. I told you I was having fun um, checking out this whole virtual online things. I had not realized that there were so many effects that you could have. So today we're going to read the first chapter out loud of the insignificant events in the life of a cactus by Dusting, Dusty Bowling. I don't know if you have a copy of this. If you want, you can follow at home. But this is the story that I will be reading to you. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, as we're reading, I'd like for you to maybe get your iPads out um, at some point afterwards and kind of just draw me a picture of what you were thinking about when what you were visualizing as I was reading out loud. Not my alien face, though. That's just for effects. Um, like we did with our global read aloud. So just what you what you've pictured, take it in, do it in drawing, post it, and then we'll, um, we'll post it onto, uh, I'll pick a Google page for it, okay? All right, here we go, my friends, alien-like. Um, not alien voice, just regular voice, just alien effects. When I was little, a kid pointed at me on the playground and shouted, her arms fell off, and then ran away screaming in terror to her mom, who had to cuddle him on her lap and rub his head for like 10 minutes to get him to calm down. I think up until then, I hadn't thought about the idea that my arms must have actually fallen off at some point in my life. I had never really thought about not having arms at all. My missing arms were an issue for me or my parents. I never once heard either one of them say, oh no, Avon can't possibly do that because that's only for armed people. Or poor Avon is so helpless without arms. Or maybe Avon can do that one day, you know, if she ever grows arms. They always said things like, you'll have to do this differently from other people, but you can manage. And I know this will be challenging. Keep trying. And you're capable of anything, Avon. I had never realized just how different I was until the day that horrible kid shouted about my arms having fallen off. For the first time, I found myself aware of my total armlessness, and I guess I felt like I was sort of naked all of a sudden. So I, too, ran to my mom, and she scooped me up and carried me away from the park, allowing my tears and snot to soak her dirt shirt. As she drove us home that day, I sat whimpering in my car seat and I sat whimpering in my car seat. Oh, I guess that's kind of when I look away, you guys get a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to start over just a little bit and keep looking at this and doing this. I told you this is different. I had never realized just how, just how different I was until the day that horrible kid shouted about my arms falling off. For the first time, I found myself aware of my total armlessness. I guess I felt like I was sort of naked all of a sudden. So I, too, ran to my mom, and she scooped me up and carried me away from the park, allowing my tears and snot to soak her shirt. As she drove us home that day, I sat whimpering in my car seat and asked her what had happened to my arms and why they had fallen off. She told me they hadn't fallen off. I was just born that way. I asked her how I could get some new arms. New arms. She said I couldn't. I wailed in despair, and she told me to stop crying because having arms was totally overrated. I didn't know what overrated meant at the time because, like I said, I was really little, and so was my brain. I kind of figured it out over the next few days, though because my parents were constantly saying things like, coloring this picture with my hands is, is okay, but if I only could color it with my feet like Avon, now that would be fantastic. And eating spaghetti with my arms is just boring. I wish I could eat with my feet. And the only person I know who can pick her nose with her toes is Avon. She sure is spe a special little kid. Dad even went so far to ask Mom if there were any arm removal services in the area. Growing up, I could do most Everything and everyone else with arms could do. Eating cereal, brushing my teeth and hair, getting dressed, and yes, even wiping my own bottom. I know you're inst instantly wondering how I do it. And maybe I'll tell you later. Maybe. Until then, you'll just have to live in suspense. Sure, these things take longer for me. Sometimes they take a lot longer. 
Sometimes I have to use special tools like a hook or a strap or something like that. And every now and then I want to scream in frustration and kick a pillow until the stuffing comes out because it's taking me 20 minutes to get my pants buttoned. But I can button my pants. I think I can do all these things because my parents have always encouraged me to figure things out on my own. Well, more like made me figure things out on my own. I suppose if they had always done everything for me, I would be helpless without them. But they didn't, and I'm not. And now that I'm 13 years old, I don't need much help with anything. True story. When I sta started kindergarten, the kids were a little weirded out by my lack of armage. I got asked just about every day what had happened to my arms, and as well as a billion other silly questions. Like, how do you make farty noises with with my armpits when I don't have arms or hands or pits? And how do I play dress up? Which I tried showing them and ended up with a goofy pink tufu stuck around my neck, around my head for about five minutes before the teacher finally noticed and helped me pull it down to my waist. I got so tired of telling them the same boring stories about being born without arms that I started making stuff up. It was stinking hilarious. I knew from the first moment I told the girl my arms had burned off in a fire, I had found a great hobby of making up stories. I loved the way her eyes grew wide with shock and the way her voice went all high-pitched with excitement, as if she asked me a bunch more questions about my charred arms. Her, what kind of fire accident? Me, a wild forest burning out of control. Her, where? Me. In the mountains of Tanzania. I honestly didn't know where Tanzania was or if it had any mountains. I think I had heard the name in an episode of Scooby-Doo or something. Her. How old were you? Me. Just a helpless baby. My mom 